Hey, welcome to Family Church Online. We are excited to see you in our chat rooms today on Facebook, YouTube, and Church Online on our website. As we begin today uh, in this message this morning, I come to you with a heavy heart. Um, Wednesday evening, I received a call that one of my spiritual sons, someone who I had a close relationship with, had passed away. And it wasn't coronavirus related. He was in the military and um, passed away during some physical training exercises. And I'm, I'm at a loss. I'm, I'm, I'm sad. I'm, I'm sad for that. I'm saddened by the several people from our church who have passed away from the coronavirus. I'm saddened by uh, the family members of church members who have passed away. And wouldn't you know it, when I sat down to write this message in the beginning of the week, uh, I felt the Holy Spirit lead me to write a message called Joy in the Holy Spirit. Joy in the Holy Spirit. And in case you didn't know, Christianity is a religion of joy. It's a belief system of joy. If you are a Christian today, you are supposed to be joyful. You are supposed to have the joy of the Lord. I personally believe that Jesus was a fun guy. I, I think that Jesus laughed a lot. I tell the story of Jesus walking on the water, and people ask, well, why did he walk on the water? And I say, well, because he missed the boat. Go back and read the story. The disciples left, and there was no boat, so... He walked on the water, and I think that he knew that it was going to kind of scare the guys, so I think as he was walking on the water, he was kind of like, ooh, and um, created this whole fun scenario with his disciples. I, I think Jesus laughed. I think he joked. He was the joy that was sent to us, and here's what I know. Real joy comes from God, the God who has liberated us from eternal death and sadness. He's given us hope and joy because he's poured his love upon us and in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. You can look that up in Romans 5.5. 5. But listen, joy comes from God. Joy comes from God, not from your ability to create some sort of emotion. When we look within our own emotions, when we look within our own strength and power, we're going to get sad. When we look at what's happening around the world today and what's happening with our schools and our homes and how everything's shut down, we're going to continue to find sadness. But as we look to Christ, as we look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, we find joy. You cannot have joy apart from God because it doesn't exist. Joy is not something you can conjure up. So here's my big idea today something that I want to get across to you. Joy is not the absence of sadness. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say it again over here. Joy is not the absence of sadness. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. Man, Pastor Mike, that's good. Thank you. Amen. Preach it, Pastor. Say it again. I'm going to say it one more time. Joy isn't the absence of sadness. It's the presence of of the Holy Spirit. In Romans 14, 17, we're told, for the kingdom of God is not meat or drink. It's something that they were fighting about and arguing about. He says, but it's this, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. True joy comes from being in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit being in your life. And there's not a lot of silly happiness going on right now that we see. There is a lot of sadness. There's a lot of sadness if you just look at social media and the posts that people are putting out. Sadness from loss, loss of jobs, loss of loved ones, loss of social connection. I'll tell you, I miss you guys. I miss social connection. Uh, there's a loss of safety. People don't feel safe right now. We're having to put medical masks on to leave our homes. We're feeling sadness because we're locked in our homes. We're secluded. 
and we're allowing our minds to write stories and scenarios of what the future might look like that we really have no idea. I'm here to tell you, today to tell you this. You can experience joy in the midst of all those feelings. You can experience joy in the middle of all those feelings. You can be saddened emotionally and still have the joy of the Lord. I'm saddened. I feel sad. But I can still have the joy of the Lord. Joy does not equal laughing. Joy does not mean laughter. We're reminded in Nehemiah 8.10, watch this. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. For the joy of the Lord is strength. So I wrote this definition. You're not going to find this in the Strong's Concordance. This one's mine. Joy means that you have the godly strength to handle with all wisdom the situation you are facing in front of you. I'm say it again. Joy means you have godly strength. The joy of the Lord is strength. You have the godly strength to handle with all wisdom the situation you are facing in front of you right now. Joy in times of sadness is strength. I think that we confuse a lot of times a feeling of happiness and laughter with joy. They're not the same thing. Happiness and laughter can be a result of a solid foundation of joy. There can be people all around you who are laughing and happy, but they have no joy. They have no peace. They have no strength to actually handle a situation. They could be around you right now laughing and playing and what looks like happy, but that's just because they had a too many drinks. That doesn't mean that they have the joy of the Lord, that they have strength to handle what's happening around them right now. Again, joy isn't the absence of sadness, it's the presence of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5.22 says this, but the fruit of the Spirit, the produce, the byproduct of having the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. So the presence of the Holy Spirit, having the Holy Spirit, brings about nine fruit in your life. And we're not talking about apples and oranges and pears. Fruit simply means proof or evidence that you have the Holy Spirit. There should be some evidence that you're a Christian, that you have the Holy Spirit. And one of them is that you have joy. Another one is that you have peace. Another one is that you're kind, right? Isaiah 51, 11 tells us this. Those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. So let me encourage you today. Make sorrow and sighing flee away from you. Get it out of your house. What sighing? Well, maybe your kids are doing it to you right now. <sighs> I'm so bored. Nothing to do. At home, online homework again. Uh, get that out of your house. Get sorrow out of your house. But how, Pastor Mike? How? When I'm so overwhelmed with the feelings of sadness, how do I get it out of my house? Firstly, and we can't get away from this, we're spirit beings. Firstly, you need a true encounter with the Holy Spirit. You need a true encounter with the Holy Spirit. Just praying, just speaking, just saying, is not a true encounter with the Holy Spirit. You need the presence of God in your home. And you can only have this by placing your trust in Jesus and making him the Lord of your life. He has to be your savior. By doing that, by making Jesus Christ your Lord, it releases the power of the Holy Spirit into your life. Yeah, you need help. We all need help. 
I need help through this time. And guess what? It's not the help of the government. Thank you, Lord, for the stimulus check. But am I allowed to say that on camera? But that's not the help that we need. We need the helper, the counselor, the advocate. These are all names of the Holy Spirit who we get when we receive Jesus into our life. Once you have Jesus in your life and the Holy Spirit is at work in your life, are you ready? Get out of his way. Get out of the Holy Spirit's way. Let him do his job. Galatians 5 told us this. The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of who? The Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is not your fruit. This did not say the fruit of a Christian is. The fruit of Michael is. It says the fruit of the Holy Spirit is. That's his work. It's his job to produce joy in my life. So let him work. Get strife out of his way. Get your anger out of his way. Get your attitude out of his way. And let him do his job. Let him do what he was sent to you to do. Watch. James 1.4 tells us this. Let patience finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Now, I'm going to warn you about something right now. Please don't pray for patience. Because the only way that you can prove that you have patience is that your patience get tested. (laughs) Don't pray for it. But what I'm saying is this, let patience finish its work. Let let patience do its job. Patience is a fruit of who? The Holy Spirit, right? So the Holy Spirit is patience. It's what he produces within our lives. So let me rewrite this for a second, okay? Let the Holy Spirit finish his work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything. Get out of his way. Get out of the Holy Spirit's way and let him finish his job. Let him finish the work that he began in you. You may be feeling today that you are lacking something. He says lacking nothing, but you feel like you're lacking something. You feel like you're lacking security. You're lacking income. But James promises that we are actually lacking nothing If we have the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you have the joy of the Lord. When you have the Holy Spirit, you have the provisions of God. We've got to pray about that. We've got to put that in God's hands. I'm going to ask you today, let the Holy Spirit loose in your life. Let joy loose in your life. Be a source of joy for your family. Be a source of joy for your neighbors by producing that, by allowing the Holy Spirit to produce that fruit through you. But what does that look like? What does it look like to allow joy to be produced through you? Remember, it does not look like laughing. It could. It doesn't have to be. Joy means that you have the godly strength to handle with all wisdom the situation you are facing in front of you right now. Go help somebody. Have godly wisdom. Have the strength. Have the power to do what you need to do. I challenge you. Do do what um, the Bible verse was telling us before, where it says that they began singing. They will enter Zion with singing, and everlasting joy will be their crown on their heads. Let me encourage you. Turn on some Christian music in your house. Maybe turn it on really loud and sing with it. Bring singing back into your home. Enjoy the words of that Christian music and the spirit behind the music. As you sing the music and the peace fills your home or your hospital room or your car, experience the joy of the Lord. And let him strengthen you. Let him build you up. Let him empower you for this moment in time. Remember, you were made for this. You're made for this moment. You wouldn't be here today if you weren't made for this moment in time. But you may be saying, Pastor Mike, I haven't even taken that first step. 
I haven't made Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. I don't have the Holy Spirit. Well, then let's take care of that today. Let's get some joy in your life right now. Pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Congratulations. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time today, would you type Jesus in the comments on Facebook and YouTube or in our chat? You can press the raise hand button or type Jesus in the chat. You can also open a prayer request that will go to a private chat with one of our hosts on our website. We would love to connect with you and get you going in your first few days in your walk with the Lord. Right now, we're going to take a few minutes and we're going to do what we call tithes and offerings. It's our opportunity to invest in the kingdom of God, invest in what God is doing here at Family Church in the Hudson Valley. We've actually created a new fund in the online giving called COVID-19. If you would like to go above and beyond your normal tithe and offering and help support uh, the food that we're giving out and the support that we're giving to the families who are in need, you can go ahead and donate to that today. You can mail us a check or you can just go onto our website, click the giving link. It will open up a secure online form where you can connect with us right now. Now listen, we're not begging for money. We're not looking for anything extra right now. We're just saying God is doing a great work in our community and you can be part of that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we can invest in the kingdom of God and what God is doing in the Hudson Valley. We thank you for a church like Family Church that is on the front lines doing what you've called them to do. So Lord, we invest into what's going on in the kingdom with a cheerful heart with an excited heart that we can be part of what you're doing right now. Lord, we are made for this, and we pray that the joy of the Lord is our strength. I thank you for those who are watching, that they are blessed. They're the head and not the tail, above and never beneath. Everything they set their hands to will prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you guys. See you tonight at FAM TV.